Cross-sections are a powerful tool for facilitating communication between the different stakeholders on your projects. LeapfrogWorks provides several tools for creating and sharing these informative sections with your project stakeholders. Due to LeapFrog's implicit nature, your LeapFrog cross-sections are dynamically linked to your 3D models, allowing you to save time and effort maintaining the cross-sections over the project's life cycle. In this video, I will introduce the different types of cross-sections that can be created in LeapFrogWorks and then focus on generating a new alignment serial section. I'll cover creating the section layout, editing the layout, and finish with exporting the sections. This video is relatively long. If you're interested in viewing a specific step in the cross-section process, please see the video topics and timings in the description section below. The options available for creating cross-sections can be found by right-clicking on the Cross-Sections and Contours folder in the project tree. We can import an existing cross-section from image, create a single new cross-section in LeapFrog, create a new fence section along an existing or a new polyline, create a series of parallel cross-sections, or create a new alignment serial section perpendicular to a chosen polyline. To begin, visualize the model and alignment in the scene. Right-click on the cross-sections and contours folder and select the new alignment serial section option. I'll select existing line and use the drop-down to select the tunnel alignment. Any line file in your project can be used as the alignment. Once I've made that selection, I can choose the width and height of the base section and where it sits relative to the alignment. By default, the base section location fields will be zeroed to place the pierce point of the alignment in the center of the base section. If the width and height are changed while the values remain at zero, the base section will stay centered on the alignment. To move the base section to the left of the pierce point, add a positive value into the left of line. To move the base section to the right of the pierce point, add a negative value. Following this pattern, use the above line field to move the base section up or down relative to the pierce point of the alignment. We can assign a start chainage value and the chainage spacing. We can also decide where we want the chainage to start, from which end of the polyline. To switch the direction, click Swap Start. If we want cross sections to be created along the entire polyline, we can select Entire Line, or if we only want to create sections along a specific part of the polyline, we can select Line Section and then define the start and end chainage. LeapFrogWorks calculates the chainage using the 2D length of the line selected as the alignment. Give the serial section object an appropriate name and click OK to create the alignment serial sections. This creates a series of flat sections which need to have the models, surfaces, and lines of interest evaluated onto them. To add models, surfaces, and line objects onto the cross sections, Right-click the new cross-section object, select Evaluations to evaluate whole, geological, numeric, or combined models, Evaluate Surfaces to evaluate surfaces that exist outside your models, or Evaluate Lines to evaluate GIS lines, polylines, or design alignments. I'll start with Evaluations to add my geological model. Once processing is complete, I can view the sections in the scene by the evaluated model. Next, I'll use Evaluate Surface to display the tunnel design and Evaluate Lines to display the alignment on the sections. Now that our objects of interest are evaluated onto the cross sections, we can design the section layout which will allow us to add features like drilling, legends, scale bars, and text to the sections. There are two options for generating section layouts. Each section layout can be created individually and then copied to other select sections if desired, or it is possible to create a master section layout that can be easily applied to all sections at once. I will use the master section layout option. The layout editor will be the same regardless of which option you pick. 
The new section layout window gives options for editing the scale, project units, vertical exaggeration, the general page properties including the page size and orientation, and which evaluated models and surfaces to display on the cross section. The evaluated models, surfaces, and lines can be added here. Click OK to close the new section layout window. The master section layout editor is now displayed with the initial parameters set. By default, the section displayed for the master section layout design is the first in the series. However, any modifications done to this layout will be available to all of the sections. Page layout can be adjusted by clicking on Page, and Section Parameters can be adjusted by clicking on Section. In addition to the options available for Section Extents, there are several options available for displaying the X and Y axes. The X and Y axes can be displayed in real world coordinates, or you can set a start value to display by chainage on long section layouts. Objects in the section preview can be rearranged and organized by clicking them and dragging them around. In the layout tree, there are numerous options available for customizing your cross sections to meet your needs, including model volume visibility, color, and hatching options, unit name in the legend, line style options for unit contacts, legend order, surface highlights, and much more. Several options are also available for customizing surfaces and lines as well. To add the boreholes to sections, right-click on Boreholes and select Add Boreholes. Planned holes can also be added to the sections. Select the Borehole Table of Interest and click OK. We can choose to filter the boreholes by their location relative to the section and then selectively choose which to include. Since the sections are at 250 meters spacing, I will filter based on 125 meters to the section. I'll check the box at the top to add the holes. Three columns of data can be displayed down the drill trace. We can change the display options for the boreholes and labels here. Multiple drill hole tables can be added to the section, but they need to be done one at a time. The Legend Group folder shows options for editing the display of the legend in the section preview window. Displays for separate models or surfaces in the legend are available by highlighting the individual model or surface under the Legend Group folder. Annotations that will not change between sections make sense to do on the master layout like the scale bar and location options, whereas annotations that are specific to certain sections should be done on each individual section, like if you're adding location-specific images or text boxes. For the title and title block annotations, it may make sense to make edits in the master layout or on the child layouts, depending on your project. Once you have set up the master section layout as you like, save it. The master layout I just created can be applied to all relevant cross sections within the Alignment Serial section object. To do this, right-click on the Alignment Master Layout and select Copy Master Layout 2. Select the Alignment sections and click OK. LeapFrog will create a child layout for all the remaining sections, 
with the child layout denoted by a cog on the icon to indicate that it is derived from a master section layout. Any subsequent edits to the master are inherited by the child layouts until such time as individual edits are made to a specific child layout. To make edits to a child layout, simply double click on it in the project tree. You will receive a notice stating that modifying a child layout will result in it no longer inheriting changes from the master layout. Click OK to proceed. As previously mentioned in this video, some of the annotations, like title blocks, images, and text boxes, are best done on the individual child layouts, so it is important to be mindful of your editing order to maximize the master layout capabilities prior to making the individual edits and breaking the link to the master. When you save the changes, you will receive a similar message. The icon for the section layout will no longer show a cog. Now that we have our alignment serial sections set up with layouts that we like, we can export them for other project stakeholders. There are a few options for exporting sections. We can export the actual section layouts we've just created, export just the model line work, or we can flatten to 2D for export for a seamless transition to geotechnical analysis software. To export the section layouts, right-click on the Cross Sections and Contours folder, scroll down, and select Batch Export Layouts. We can individually select the sections we are interested in, or use the Select All button to grab all of the sections at once. There are several export file options. The first option will combine all of the sections into a single PDF file. The other options will produce individual files for each section. If you choose one of these options, you can then opt to combine the outputs into a zip archive. Leapfrog Works also provides options for exporting the line work from sections either in 3D real world space or flattened into 2D drawing space for use in geotechnical analysis software. To access these export options, right click on the section of interest and select Export. Select the model and the export format, DXF, DWG, or DGN. Here you have the option to flatten to 2D and set the origin XY coordinates as needed.